Alrighty. Good evening, everyone. Who's ready for story time? Uh, tonight we are reading, finishing, the story of the white snake. We'll be reading parts 10, 11, and 12. This is the, uh, the story of the white snake. The monks of the Golden Mountain Monastery felt that they had won a great victory. They all discussed the evening, the events of the battle. Shu Shen asked every monk he met about his wife. Please, sir, what happened to my wife? But none of them knew. I've got to leave here and find her. I should never have listened to Fahai. Shu Shen said softly to himself. He secretly left the monastery and returned to the pharmacy, but Bai Su Tsin was not there. Shu Shen roamed everywhere, looking for her for weeks. All happiness had fled along with his wife. Finally, he realized that things couldn't go on in this way. I'll go to live with my sister in Hangzhou, Shu Shen made up his mind. He sold the pharmacy and boarded a boat to Hangzhou. From afar, he saw the broken ridge, a famous landmark there. The broken bridge. A famous landmark there. When Shu Shen's boat arrived, he could make out two women on the shore. They seemed very familiar. Bai Su Tsin, is that you? Shu Shen excitedly began to yell and leapt ashore as soon as the boat neared land. Husband, could it be? A low and weak voice responded. Bai Su Tsin, Su Tsin! Shu Shen ran quickly to Bai Su Tsin and then saw Xiao Qin. Xiao Qin was holding a sword and stood in front of Bai Su Tin. Her expression was cold. Xu Shen tried to get near Bai Su Tin, but Xiao Qin leveled her sword at him. Xu Shen was stunned. Xiao Qin, have you gone mad? he asked. Don't come any nearer, Xiao Qin was mad enough to kill him. Our mistress treated you so well, and still you run to the Gold Mountain Monastery to hide. Xiao Qin advanced, step by step, toward Xu Xin. I, I, Su Xin! Xu Xin was so anxious he didn't know what to do. Bai Su Xin moved to protect her husband. Xiao Qin, how could you be so rude to master? Her voice was commanding, but as soon as she said these words, she collapsed. Xiao Qin dropped the sword and ran to Bai Su Tsin's side, with Xu Shen on her heels. It's nothing. I just need to rest for a bit. Then I'll be better. Bai Su Tsin said softly. To Xiao Qin, she said, You mustn't blame Master. Xu Shen took control of the situation. We can't stay here. It will be night soon. Let's go to my sister's house, he decided. That night in Hangzhou, Bai Su Tsin bore a son. With a child, any house becomes warmer. All resentments were water under the bridge, and harmony was restored. Xu Shen's life in Hangzhou was extremely comfortable. He was rich and had no need to work. His sister, wife, and Xiao Qin managed household affairs beautifully. Day after day passed pleasantly in this way, but a storm was brewing. Although the monks at the Gold Mountain Monastery thought of the battle with Bai Su Tin as a great victory, Fa Hai was not satisfied. Those two snake spirits are too powerful. They actually commanded the water spirits of the Yangtze River to battle with me, Fa Hai thought to himself. Although we won the battle, we couldn't kill them. We shouldn't be allowed to carry on their charade in the human realm any longer. Part 11. The Golden Alms Bowl Fahai knew that his own powers were insufficient to defeat Bai Su Tsin and Xiao Qin, so he went to Lin Mountain, where Buddha himself lived. Fahai hoped to steal a magical gold alms bowl from Buddha. Although this was dangerous, he was obsessed with defeating Bai Su Tsin and Xiao Qin. Usually, an alms bowl is a very ordinary implement that every monk uses to beg, but the one that Fahai hoped to steal was very special. 
it could be used to trap spirits, no matter how powerful. Fahai turned himself into a large turtle and hid under Buddha's seat for many days. Finally, one day, Buddha dozed off. Fahai left his hiding place and turned himself back into a monk. He stole the golden alms bowl and then fled back to the human realm. Fahai then watched Shushen's house for days, disguised as a peddler. When he saw Shushen leave, he blew on the gold alms bowl and then on a tray filled with strings. The bowl turned into a gorgeous gold crown studded with jewels, and the strings turned into beautiful and ornate gold bracelets. Fahai approached the house and knocked on the door. When Xiao Qin opened the door, Fahai said, I have some beautiful wares to sell, jewelry and hair combs, everything a lady desires. He uncovered the tray of exquisite bracelets. May I see the lady of the house? The jewelry dazzled Xiao Qin. Just a minute. I'll see if the mistresses are available. She ran to get Bai Su Tsin and Xu Shen's sister. When all four were seated, Fahai brought out the tray of bracelets. Bai Su Tsin and Xu Shen's sister were just about to try a couple of them on when Fahai pulled the crown out from under his robe. The three women gasped at its beauty. A lovely lady such as yourself deserves the best, said Fahai, turning to Bai Su Tsin. You are the only one I've seen who is beautiful enough to wear it. Its beauty would overwhelm the face of any other. Fa Hai smiled, unctuously. As soon as Bai Su Tsin saw the crown, she had to have it. Why don't you try it on? coaxed Fa Hai. He stood up to place the crown on her head. Bai Su Tsin made no move to stop him. But once the crown was on her head, it grew tighter and tighter. She tried to pull it off, but it wouldn't budge. The pain was unbearable, and she fell to the floor in a faint. Xiao Qin and Xu Shen's sister ran to help her when Fa Hai threw off his disguise. You! yelled Xiao Qin. Fa Hai sneered at Xiao Qin and the prone Bu Bai Su Tsin. You are in my power now. You'll never live in the human realm again. So saying, Fa Hai blew on the crown, which changed back into the alms bowl. It rolled off Bai Su Tsin's head and began to emit a blinding white light. The beams of light covered Bai Su Tsin and Xiao Qin, and they started to shrink. They began to turn back into snakes and were drawn into the alms bowl, helpless against Fa Hai's evil plot. Xu Shen's sister was too stunned to move and Fa Hai quickly fled from the house. When Xu Shen returned home, neither Xiao Qin nor Bai Su Tsin were there. His son was crying loudly. His sister was sitting on the floor gazing fixedly ahead with bulging eyes. She didn't seem to recognize anyone. The house was a mess, as if a great struggle had taken place. What happened? Where are Bai Su Tsin and Xiao Qin? Xu Shen anxiously asked. His sister began crying. I was scared to death, she said between sobs. A, a monk came here, she told him the whole story. Fa Hai! It had to be Fa Hai! Xu Shen was so stunned that he fainted. It was a long time before he woke up to see a doctor bending over him while his sister looked on worriedly. Xu Shen never saw Bai Su Tsin or Xiao Qin again. As the years passed, Xu Shen felt as if his entire life with Bai Su Tsin and Xiao Qin had been a dream, a beautiful dream that was a little scary too. Despite his fear, he felt as if he had lost something unspeakably wondrous, and life seemed empty and meaningless. He wanted to die, but he couldn't. He still had his son to think of, his poor, motherless boy. Part 12 Thunder Hill Pagoda 
In Hangzhou, the story of the two snakes spread. It was said that Fa Hai had buried the bowl with the two snakes in it under Thunder Hill Pagoda, outside of Hangzhou by West Lake. Legend has it that the pagoda was built around the year 900. In Shu Shen's day, it had a long history and was already very dilapidated. But when the evening sun set, its reflection would be cast into West Lake, and the pagoda still looked beautiful indeed. Many famous poets and painters went to Thunderhill Pagoda for inspiration. When Shu Shen heard that the two snake spirits were rumored to be buried under the pagoda, he often went there hoping to find Fahai's gold alms bowl or a white or green snake. He never found either, to his immense regret. Time passed, and Shu Shen's son grew up rapidly. Every year on the day of Bai Su Tsin's disappearance, Shu Shen took his son to Thunder Hill Pagoda. He often stared at the pagoda for hours, as if it was a rich source of happy memories for him. Shu Shen's son never saw his father smile, except on the days they went there. Father, why are we here? Shu Shen's son would ask. Well, when your mother died, she was buried under this pagoda, Shu Shen would reply. Over the years, he had fabricated a complex story about Bai Su Tsin and Xiao Qin. committed no evil deeds, so he set them free. Over the years, most people slowly forgot about Thunder Hill Pagoda and the story of the snakes. Occasionally, however, an old person will sit on the bank of West Lake in front of a group of children and tell them a story. A story about a white snake and a green snake. That was the end. Thank you for listening. Good night.